Hey guys, this is Chuck from Brady Adventures. If you haven't checked out Blue Ridge Overland Gear, head on over to their website. They have some really cool equipment. It can really help you organize your overland rig. And a special thanks to Adam for giving us an awesome tour. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and give us a thumbs up if you enjoy the video. Alright guys, so I'm on my way uh, out to the cabin in the mountains and um, normally I do that really, really early in the morning or, or really late at night just to try to, to get there and get an extra day or extra half a day. Um, this morning I actually hung out with the kids and made breakfast and got them out on the school bus and realized that I'm going to be passing right through or uh, right past Bedford, Virginia, which is the home of Blue Ridge Overland Gear. I decided uh, to take a little detour and spend an extra half hour getting off the interstate and um, going back to check this place out. I should get there right when they open up. Uh, so hopefully it'll be a little pretty cool spot to check out. Well, it's a little bit late for the colors to be this bright and intense, but it's been a pretty warm fall. Man, it is absolutely amazing out here. It's, it's super, super foggy, but the yellows and reds and are just all the colors are popping right through that fog and it's really cool. You come around the bends and you can see the, the valleys open up and it's, it's really pretty up here. I gotta tell you, this is the reason to get off the interstate. Um, it is just super, super beautiful up here. Okay, the fact that there's an 80 series out here and a decked out uh, Overland Cherokee, it's probably a good sign. So let's go in and check these guys out. So we're here at the uh, Blue Ridge Urban Gear store here in Bedford, Virginia. Um, so I'll kind of walk you through it, give you the guys the grand tour. Um, building was built uh, around 1897 as far as we know. It was originally a grain and feed store and uh, I think after that shut down it became a hardware store for about 60 or 70 years. And they shut down about two years ago building was vacant for about a year and actually we took it uh, a year ago in November. Okay. Cool. Uh, so we've been here for a year. Uh, Blue Ridge Airbling here originally started as an online company. Um, it was based out of Matt's garage on his farm about four miles from here. And uh, when we finally outgrew Matt's garage, uh, we took this building about a year ago just to uh, put production upstairs and also eventually open the, uh, the store that you see here. When I was hired about three months ago, uh, it was my job to open up the store, do sales and marketing and, and all that kind of thing. So cool. now that we have the store open, um, you know, people kind of like to come in, put their hands on some of the gear, see it before they actually buy it online and that kind of thing. No doubt. So that and we're holding you know, at least some monthly events here at the store, a lot of meetups, um, those kinds of things. So uh, if you want to take a look around the showroom. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. So we, we sold a lot of our inventory there. It was a really, really busy show. Yeah, that looked like a real successful uh, was, uh, show for a lot of people. Like seven to like ten thousand people walked through there in a weekend. I mean, it was, yeah. it was incredible. Busy. A lot of a uh, lot of good weather that weekend too. So we have uh, anything from packing cubes to our camp uh, cook kits, all the way to uh, JQ grab handle pouches. Our air tool kits. Uh, we're also a, an ARB dealer as well, so we carry a lot of their stuff as well as go treads, um, that kind of stuff. So and then we have uh, stuff like the Molly seatback panel. These are super convenient for uh, keeping your stuff organized up off the floor yeah. um, and kind of readily available. If you're sitting in the driver's seat, you can always reach right back behind, grab anything you may need to uh, off of the back of the passenger seat, or vice versa. And then we have our headrest first aid kit, which actually is Velcroed on, so should anything happen, you can rip it right off. How That's about fantastic. Truck, take care of whatever you need to. It's really cool. Yeah, this is kind of a smaller headrest. These fit really well on normal headrests. They just don't on this. This is like a mid-80s Toyota seat or something like that. I forget yeah. what it's out of, but yeah. extremely convenient to have your first aid kit right there on the, uh, on oh. the headrest. And that's, that's one of the seatback panels as well. And then, of course, we have 
uh, seat back, this normally goes on the back of the seat. Uh, trash bag, storage compartment, any kind of stuff. Uh, we really like to utilize dead space in a vehicle. No doubt, right, yeah. Um, so that's that's kind of what we uh, we make our gear for, is uh, kind of keeping you organized on the road of adventure. So I gotta tell you too, like fusing sort of the overland mm -hmm. styles that you know we've learned from Australia and South Africa sure. with sort of US mm -hmm. military spec exactly. kind of prepper type of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's just like a perfect combo. Right. And, I agree. Yeah, it's kind of funny how a lot of the uh, the prepper crowd also identifies with the overland sure. crowd as well because there is some overlap there. There which is, is yep. which is pretty interesting. Yep. And, and some of the prepper people are, are very interesting characters. They're, <laughs> no they're a little extremist in, in yeah. some aspects, but they also come up with some really interesting ideas and solutions sure. that also, again, overlap into the overland community. Absolutely. So it's, it's, uh, it's pretty interesting. Uh, some of the some of the people and characters that you meet, you know, while you're out there, yeah. you know, doing adventure travel. Uh, we have uh, also have a couple of James Brewer rooftop tents. Uh, these are the hard clamshell. I mean, some of the best of the best. Um, being that they are the uh, hard top, they're really easy to open and close. Basically, four clips uh, on each side, oh, yeah, and you're camping in about 20 seconds. Tell you what, those look pretty heavy too. Oh, That's yeah, nice. Definitely. And the nice thing is, is that set up and break down is super easy. Say you're standing on the ground, you can grab this handle, pull it right down, Bam. close her on down, and of course all it takes is a small little push. She's right back up, you lock the knees, and you are camping with you. It's awesome. So, pretty easy system. The nice thing about them is they have not only a three inch memory foam mattress in them, but also a built in fan with a small solar panel on the top as oh, well. Oh yeah, look at that, that's sweet. So you have that, so it kind of circulates air through it. You also have an attic inside. The material that this is made out of has a UV uh, protected on it, so it's actually a lot cooler inside of the tent than you would normally think it would be. It comes with a sm uh, small kind of rechargeable uh, LED light. And my favorite part about these tents is say that you're camping in the rain or uh, fog or anything like that, it gets uh, damp inside the tent. While you're going down the road and it's closed down, these vents on the side actually circulate air throughout it and will actually uh, dry the tent as you drive, you drive down the road. That's sweet. So, pretty That's interesting sweet. stuff. So we have the clamshell and then we have the one that kind of goes straight up, a little bit uh, more room in there. Uh, but it has all the same features, the vents on the side, uh, the UV uh, protected material, as well as the built-in fan. This one's got a bit more room and also has an attic inside of it as well. Oh yeah, look at that. that's nice. So a little bit extra storage, a little bit more room. Kind of a bigger tent, so. So right over here, uh, we have one of our guys in the can working on a project for uh, Dead Man Off-Road. And what this is, is basically a um, piece of recovery gear that you bury about 36 inches under the ground. Oh, all right, yeah, yeah. You bury this about 36 inches under the ground, and uh, you get, I believe, uh, 7,200 pounds of uh, pull from this to extract your vehicle if you don't have another vehicle to winch off of or a tree to winch off of. So this is yeah. another option to get Worst you out. case scenario, Worst emergency case scenario. recovery tool. Yeah, it's called the Dead Man, so you bury it underground. It has four straps on each corner. You attach those to your winch yeah. line and you're winching yourself out. Dig it, yeah, so, that's awesome. That's yeah. a really cool idea. Very, very cool idea. So we're making, uh, we're making these for Dead Man Off-Road um, as one of our projects. So, just one of many projects. Yeah, this is, so, this is see, cool stuff. Anything from uh, t-shirts to uh, cooking bags to one of the adventure scottles as yeah. well. Yeah, I've... I've so these are the miniature scottles. You have a burner right under here. And really what the smaller scottles are geared towards, because the normal ones are about this big around yep. and waist level, uh, is these are geared towards the adventure motorcycle crowd. Got you. So basically they're All a lot right. more compact. You can fit them in a pannier or a soft case on the side of a motorcycle. Sure. Um, and be able to cook a nice meal, you know, kind of on the road of adventure if you're, you're into the motorcycle uh, sure. thing. Sure. So I could even see me using that just for something quick to pull out and not a lot of setup um, time. It saves a lot more space in a vehicle rather than having yep. a larger mm -hmm. uh, scuttle, mm -hmm. of course. And you can cook, you know, two meals on there for, for two people. 
Yeah, that's um, awesome. So that's one thing we, uh, we have in stock. I'll tell you what, I, I recently saw this and thought I need one of those because right. I'm always bringing the chainsaw and it's right. getting crap all over the back of my truck. That, or it smells like gas. It smells like gas. Keep, keep it inside the vehicle. Yeah. So we have uh, what's called our chainsaw bra and that's got four uh, straps on each corner that cinch down. And if you have a case for your chainsaw, that'll basically keep it cinched down to the rack. The problem is, is that uh, if you're only using like ratchet straps or something like mm -hmm. that, the chainsaw will wiggle loose. Yep. This will not allow it to move. It yeah. will not move if this is cinched down. Correctly. That's a really nice idea. So we have that and then the action packer cover, which I believe is a five gallon uh, container. And uh, we make these uh, as well. Just to kind of, again, keep them cinched down because ratchet straps just don't do it if, unless you have the uh, piece that kind of goes over and, sure. and kind of cradles it to the rack. So. Yeah, this is all kind of stitched together and yeah, this is little uh, waterproof really material. Yeah, this is truck tarp and this stuff just lasts forever. It, yeah, You know, stands okay. up to UV. Um, yeah, this one obviously is a little bit used and a little bit worn, but I tell you, there's no reason why it wouldn't work for years yeah. and years and years. So. No doubt. And then, of course, we have uh, Scottle covers, so if you leave your Scottle outdoors, um, oh, yeah. you know, you can kind of just throw a cover over it so it doesn't get rusty. And then around here we have, uh, we made these for 7P International. These are their recovery bags, which is pretty much everything you need when it comes to recovery gear. Mm -hmm. A lot of really nice stuff, anything from soft shackles, um, I forget what exactly is in here. Oh, just like tape and odds and ends, uh, snatch block, straps here, uh, winch extension, uh, metal shackles as well. All I, that I, I love the snatch blocks, man. They just like Those continue nice. to look nicer and fancier. And right, right. I've used old school ones forever, and these sure. are like... Yeah, this is one of the high-end ones. Yeah. I mean, super, Pretty super crazy. nice. Love the color on there, too. Yeah, no doubt. You ain't going to lose fun. it in the mud, I don't think. No, definitely not. So... Yeah, we have the uh, recovery backpacks, and I think we'll be releasing those early next year. Okay. Um, so that'll carry just all your gear. You can throw it on your back um, instead yeah. of having everything in your hands, slipping all in the mud and, and that kind that's of stuff. A, that's so. a really nice idea, yep. yeah. And, and then, then, of course, over here we have what's called our hitchhiker. And this basically mounts in the hitch receiver of your vehicle and gives you a place to put your hammock. Uh, this arm right here and this arm right here actually pop out and fold in here so you can leave it uh, in your hitch while yeah. you're driving down the road. And these will work with really, uh, I think, 9 or 11 foot hammocks is what okay. this will work with. Um, these hammocks from Yukon Outfitters are rated for like 450 pounds. So certainly no reason why you can't put, you know, two people in there. Yeah, no kidding. Um, just kind of hang out. And it's nice if you don't have a tree to tie it to or anything like yeah. that. Yeah, it's a pretty cool idea. Oh, I see. It's got like a... Yeah, these like kind of little, yeah, these kind of clamp together. Little area you can yeah. drop they those tubes in there. And, and That's and nice. Keeps you kind of organized. So anybody that likes hammock camping, this is uh, yeah. this is definitely the way to go. And then you got tons of yeah, moly these are, attachable stuff. These are kind of all of our accessories. We have anything from our visor organizer uh, panels, kind of uh, stuff in here. A lot of our hydro flask. Um, Molly holders as well, which uh, you can you know, really put these on our seat back panels anywhere you'd like, on a backpack, stuff like yeah. that. Uh, these these sell really, really well. Uh, so just kind of keeping stuff organized uh, in stock and whatnot. That's, uh, I believe, a growler pouch. Ah. Uh, that's, that's called. So that you can put a growler, you know, beer or a giant one, you know, thing, a container of water in there. It's an incredibly so. good idea. <laughs> You guys know what you're doing. Yeah. No, you know what's important for sure. Yeah. So a lot of our bags have uh, a Velcro on them, sure. uh, to where you can actually use our little um, uh, patch signs to actually kind of keep stuff even more organized. Right. If you have multiple bags that look the same, you can stick these on there. Anything from hand tools to fun shit to tools. Right. That might go in your growler pack. Right. I don't know, right? right? So a lot of our other uh, Velcro pouches, you know, kind of go over here that uh, work at multiple bags and multiple systems that we uh, that we make. So these are 12 by 4 by 1, two Velcro strips on the back. These usually go inside stuff like our tool bags or um, really the sky's kind of the limit on where you can sure. where you can stuck, uh, put these things. Um, the nice thing about a lot of our gear is that, you know, it's, it's modular. You can modify it to your taste. Um, right. So yeah, it kind of you can make it really work for you. So that's kind of the downstairs portion. We can uh, 
walk upstairs and look at where we actually make all of this stuff. Okay, great. It's made right here in Bedford, American Man, I... made, and we're very, very proud of that. So when this was still a hardware store, we also had an art gallery up here at the same time. I think for about four years or so. Um, so basically we turned this into a production up here. Here sewing, kind of working uh, full time. The really cool fact is the floor up here is actually original. It was just flipped and refinished. So this is still original floor. Yeah, it here. looks awesome. Looks really nice. So we have a bunch of machines up here. This is really uh, kind of assemble all of the bags. These are kind of all of the samples against the, uh, the back wall there. Heart heart. Oh, yeah. Mark the nice. And then in here is our kind of uh, raw materials room where everything gets measured, uh, cut, kind of along that table. Um, so this is kind of where we keep all the raw materials, and then next door is where everything's assembled. My favorite part this of the building. Is super impressive. Super impressive. Is right here. This is actually an original hand-operated elevator. Oh, look at that. So this entire platform comes up and down uh, three stories. The rope is actually ran behind the wall here on this big pulley. So you stand behind uh, the wall down there, hand crank this thing kind of up and down. This is uh, pretty convenient when you bring in like yeah. big loads of stuff in. Believe yeah. it or not, everything that's up here on the uh, third floor yeah. uh, came up on this hand cranked elevator. We, all, we estimate this elevator's from somewhere around the 1920s. Wow. I was going to say, so you, so you actually trust it, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, so we've had a couple thousand pounds on it before, and it, wow. it still, uh, still takes and still handles it. So. That is really, really neat. Yep, it's pretty exciting to have, have something like this up here. And if my son was here, he would be flipping out. He, d he just loves, like, old, weird kind of stuff. Right, right. Yeah, wow, that is, that is super cool. Yep, so. All right. I'm pretty proud of the fact that we have a cool old building, and it kind of fits with uh, what we do, and kind of lifestyle. So. Comfort's room here, and then this is the back steps. Chief burrito taster. <laughs> that's, a, that's a sign of a good work culture, oh, for yeah, sure. Definitely, definitely. So right here is the uh, ropes that are oh, used yeah. to operate the elevator. So you're basically kind of cranking on those. Yeah, no doubt. Puffing and puffing if you have a couple thousand pounds. I bet you are, yeah. yeah. And back here is kind of our shipping and receiving. Where we uh, receive any packages, ship them out. And that is Jen. She's a wizard when it comes to that. Yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of the, uh, the tour of the Blue Ridge Overland Gear store. Um, we're open Tuesday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. and then Saturday from 10 to 3. Fantastic, man. Established store hours, and uh, again, we have monthly events. So if you look us up on Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, we also have a blog. Um, you can kind of get you know updates about what we're doing here. Um, usually, it's about a monthly event. So cool. Well, I'm going to be back for one of those events for sure. Excellent. Wow, this is uh, this is impressive, man. I I, I really really appreciate you sure, giving me sure. a tour, and um, and I'll I'll be back again soon. So thank you so much. Sounds great. If you have a chance and you're passing through Virginia on 81, um, just just get off the highway and uh, follow your navigation to Blue Ridge Overland and you can uh, check out their shop. You will have a tree for sure. It's definitely worth the, uh, the detour. So check it out. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel. And always feel free to leave us any comments or questions that you might have.